Amen. All right. Uh, Reverend Dickerson, I'm going to ask you to unmute your line and go ahead and uh, bring the word of the Lord to us tonight on developing unwavering faith. Yes. Grace and peace, Pastor, to you. Grace and peace to all the Zionites this evening and their families. Grace and peace to all the guests on the line and their families. I uh, welcome you to our Tuesday night session of Developing Unwavering Faith, where we're coming out of James 1, 6, where it says, let them ask in faith without wavering. I pray all is well with you and your families. I pray the Lord is blessing you and keeping you while you're going through whatever it is you may be dealing with in your life at this present time. And I want to encourage you to keep on believing, keep on trusting the Lord while he's uh, working it through for you. Uh, and do, don't give up, don't quit. Well, he may not answer you uh, suddenly, but I do believe he will answer you eventually. And I pray that you have had a blessed and wonderful day. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to a very familiar passage of Scripture, Proverbs 18, 21, as well as Matthew 12, 34. Proverbs 18, 21, and Matthew 12, 34. <clears throat> and we'll stand for the reading of God's Word. And Proverbs 18, 21, from the New uh, excuse me, from the King James Version Bible, simply says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In the Passion Bible, Proverbs 18, 21 says this, your words are so powerful that they will kill or give life, and the talkative person will reap, I like to add, or suffer the consequences. Let me read that again. Proverbs 18, 21 from the Passion Bible. Your words are so powerful that they will kill or give life, and the talkative person will reap, and I'm adding, and also suffer the consequences. Matthew 12, 34b, that just means the last part of the verse, says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That's King James Version. And the Passion Bible says it this way, for what has been stored up in your hearts will be heard in the overflow of your words. My brothers, sisters, family, and friends, before I give you this title this evening, or what I want to say this evening, um, I was talking with some folks this past week. I had already prepared a message, and it got changed this morning. Because ever since Sunday, after talking with some folks who are going through and have gone through their doctor's appointments and got what the doctors had said to them, I, I noticed a pattern, and I want to share this uh, pattern of, of because it's, it's something... And we all do it. So I'm encouraging not so I'm encouraging all those on the sound of my voice, as well as myself, we all do it. And I just want to encourage you that this is something that we should not be doing. So, with that being said, I would like to bring a word this evening. Don't repeat it, don't rehearse it, nor regurgitate on it. Don't repeat it, don't rehearse it nor regurgitate on it. Now that I have your attention with that title, here's where, here's where I'm going with this. Here we go. During everyone's lifetime, mm -hmm, when we, go, we, we uh, go for our physical exams, mm -hmm, we will all have to deal with and endure a negative report from the doctors. Now listen, that is not a doubt and unbelief or faithless statement. For it's what? Really just a reality of life. Somewhere in your lifetime, the doctor's going to tell you something you don't want to hear. However, though the doctors may give you their medical and professional opinion based on what the x-rays show them, doesn't make it necessarily true. I say this confidently and boldly because we all have heard quite often of someone getting an incorrect diagnosis and the results of the tests and x-rays are not always 
what the doctor says it was. Bear with me because this is really coming from my heart. And I pray that this message encourages someone and gives someone to, something to think about after they have visited the doctors. And the problem I have, here we go, with the doctors is them telling you that what they think the problem is as though it really is what the problem is. When in fact, they really don't know until they take more tests to find out what it really is. But instead of the doctor saying to you, we think this is what it is and what we see, they tell you as if they really know this is what it is. You have this and you have that. My brothers and family friends, that really just irks me. I have my own experience with, with some relatives where the doctors told them a certain thing and to find out and got them all nervous and concerned to find out it wasn't what they said they thought it was at all. And it, it, to me, that is a problem. I don't know why doctors do that. I don't know why they just can't come to you and say, we think we see this. We think you may have this. No, they got to come with this bull rush, you know, even though they may be coming to you sensitive, sensitively to tell you it, but yet I think it's wrong for them to tell you that you have this phatically when they really don't know. And it really bugs the mess out of me and gets on my nerves. Now, okay, then listen, they, they do that to you, right? Then you as a patient go home and tell everyone what the doctor says you have. When in reality, you are only repeating, you're only rehearsing, and you're only regurgitating on what they think it is, which in turn, in my opinion, compounds the problem I want to address today in this message. I want to encourage you, my brothers and fine friends today, and I really, again, pray that this message encourages you uh, through this message. Though it can be and will be difficult to do because, you know, we give so much weight to what the doctor says. And, and, and I get it and I understand it. You know, they're the doctors. They've been trained. They've, they've been doing the studying. But, but in my opinion, we give too much weight of what the doctor says about whatever they see or what they think they see. And the message I want to share and I want all to hear is no matter what the doctor says, here we go. Don't repeat it, don't rehearse it, nor regurgitate on it. Now, when I say don't repeat it, of course you're going to repeat it and tell somebody who you need to tell what you're going, what the doctor says you're going or that you had, all right? And let me put a pin right there also. I want to caution you also who you tell about what you're going through. You do not have to, and it's not wise, okay, yeah. OK, it's not wise for you to go and tell everybody what you're going through. It, 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 that's not necessary. You need to go find someone you can confide in, you can trust, who's not going to put your business all out in the street. Because listen, even because most of the time, most folks don't know what to do with it when they give you, you give them the bad information. And most of the time you're going to get, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. But, well, here, but and that's, and that's all well and good. What I'm just trying to say is I caution you about putting all your news out there about what you're going through. Everybody does it not need to know it. So listen, and so when you do tell others about what the doctor says, again, don't repeat it, don't rehearse it, don't regurgitate on it. This is what I mean. In other words, don't say what they are saying. Don't say what they say. Here's, here's what I mean by that. Say what you believe and expect to happen. Mm, mm, mm. It's one thing... And this is, this is what I noticed after talking to some folks on Sunday. And uh, it really, I'm like, wow, okay. And it made, it's sad to me because, you know, they were more likely putting all the emphasis on what the doctor says. And right away, of course, I wanted to come back and say, but that's what they say. You know, that's not what it is. That's what they say. Well, what does God say? Well, I, I, you know, I didn't want to bombard them that they were dealing with what they're dealing with. And I get it. But I want to encourage all to think about this as you deal with your doctor's appointments and you get your doctor's diagnosis or prognosis and, and what the and how to handle it when you get it. I know it's not easy. I know it's hard. And a lot of folks don't know what to do. But then again, my assignment is to share and to, with you, not just from the top of my head, but from my own experience, how we're to handle 
what the doctor tells us. Now, what I'm trying to share with you, my brothers and sisters, friends, it is one thing to say, this is what the doctor says. That, and that's fine. But it's another thing to say what the doctor has said, but then also back up what they say with what you believe and are expecting to happen. For if you just stop with saying what the doctor says, without stating what you believe, you are essentially signing off in agreement with the doctor that you have what they say, and I'm gonna put it this way, what they think you have. And the end result will be what they say it will be. Now, and I want to encourage you with this message. Here we go. Again, don't repeat it. Don't rehearse it and don't regurgitate it on it. In spite of what they told you, it doesn't matter what they say. The question is, what do you say and what do you believe? For what you say and believe is the only thing that matters. Now, when I say that, that what you believe and what you say is the only thing that matters, it's true when it comes to your faith. Now, of course, what the doctor may have told you, because you, you're going to need to be able to know how to handle it and deal with it. Okay, that is important, too. But again, just because the doctor said this is what it is, does it make it so? And we got countless of different uh, of, of, of experiences with folks who found out that they did not have what the doctor said. And I'm just trying to caution you not to go, about, go around repeating and, and rehearsing and regurgitating what they think you have because you know that's not good just because here we go the doctor says it doesn't make it so you must not here we go again repeat it rehearse or regurgitate what they say as though it is what they say it is for when you do you again are signing off on their diagnosis and as well as their prognosis don't repeat it don't rehearse it nor regurgitate on it. Don't say what they say just because they said it. Don't say what the doctor said and then leave it there. No, 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 no. You must, after you say what the doctor has said to whoever you go and say it to, is immediately follow up your report to whoever you're talking to at the time and say right behind it, what you believe. I know what the doctor told you, mm -hmm, but what do you believe? What do you ex what are you expecting to happen to you by faith and what will happen to you and what you expect as the end result will be? Because what? Once we get that doctor report, mm -hmm, we're going to have to what? Stand in faith, believing the opposite of what they say, no matter what they say. Mm -hmm. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters, family, friends, please listen to me and listen to me real good. And please hear my heart. When you keep repeating and keep rehearsing and keep regurgitating on what the doctor says without saying what you believe is a indication you also believe and are accepting and expecting what the doctor says it will be or that it, whatever it is to be so which is an indication that you are agreeing with them instead of believing what God can do and will do about your condition. And when you do that, you are and have essentially signed your name to the diagnosis and have signed off what they say the end result will be. Let me, let me give, just give you an example. So, so you, you know, you're talking to somebody and they just got back from their doctors and they say, well, you know, the doctor says that I have this and I'm, I'm going to be this way. And I'm going to have this. I'm going to have to take medicine all the time. And this is what the doctor says. And, you know, and, and the way they say it comes off as though they are accepting what the doctor says. Because when you're standing in faith, and this is my experience, when you're standing in faith and believing opposite on what the doctor, because you know, no one wants to hear a negative doctor's report, right? Nobody wants to hear that. So in order to counter what the doctor has said to you, so it doesn't settle down into your, go from your ear, your ears and down into your heart and settles down into your spirit, where you start believing what they say, you're going to have to come back with, okay, doctor, I, I, I hear you. But I believe 
by his stripes, I'm healed. I believe I'm well. I believe I'm going to be well. And I believe I will get through this. By doing that, it's going to help you not to settle in on what the doctor says just because he's the doctor. We know the real doctor, and that's God himself, almighty God. And he's the one. He's our healer. And I'd rather believe what the God can do over what the doctor, the doctor says is happening with me and will happen. I'm putting God on the scene immediately as soon as I get that report. When the doctor says you have cancer, for an example, mm -hmm, then when you then, when telling others what the doctor says, follow up by faith what you believe and what you expect to happen. By saying, I believe I'm healed, I'm well, and I will be well, and this too will pass. If you say what the doctor says as though it was as, as what they say it is, and then leave it there, you're going to, believe it or not, end up having what they say. All because you're believing what they say. I, 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 what I'm trying to say here is, I'm not saying not to believe what they say. I'm just cautioning you that when they tell you something and they're not sure, then you, you, you need to counteract that statement or what they're trying to tell you, or even if they think they know for sure. That, okay, I heard what you said, doctor, but I'm not receiving that. I'm trusting the Lord. I, okay, and I will do all I need to do to go through my therapies and my rehabs and take whatever medicines I need to take. But I'm believing in the name of Jesus that by his stripes, I'm healed. Now, a lot of folks can't do that. A lot of folks are not there in their, their faith level. I get that. And it's going to take time. It's going to take practice. But my brothers and sisters, friends, your life is on the line and you need to take a stand for yourself and you need to take a stand with God when the doctors tell you what they're supposed to tell you about what's going on with your body. Whether it's a, a serious situation or if it's a small thing that the doctors tell you, you still need to take a stand in faith and believe God for your healing. Okay, because it, because you have, a, when you just say what the doctors say, I, I'm, I, I know I'm sound like I'm sound redundant, but I need to stress this. When you just say what your, your doctor says and don't come back with your own what you believe and what's going to what's going to happen with you, you have essentially accepted what they have said, not just in your head, but also in your heart. And therefore, you say what they are saying because you are now what believing what they say. You don't say or you should not be saying anything unless you believe it. Well, if you let it get what they tell you, get down into your ears and get down into your heart and you start believing it and start playing with it in your mind, eventually you are going to start saying it and you're going to start saying it on, on a regular basis without even realizing you're just saying what they're saying. But the question is, what do you believe? I know what you told me, what the doctor says, but, 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 but what, what do you believe? Because that's what they say. Mm -hmm. And I don't care. No, I don't care. It doesn't matter how serious the, the situation is. And I'm not making light of it. And, I, and I, I'm, you know, uh, uh, praying for you and praying for those who are going through seriously. But my point is, even though it is serious and even though they may be right on, you still then need to confess what you believe God is going to do for you and get you through the situation. For if you don't, and you just keep saying what the doctor says, you are signing on for the package. That is go it is what they say it is. For if you didn't believe it, you would not say it as though you believed it. Mm -hmm. And that is what you are doing when you are constantly repeating, rehearsing, and regurgitating on what they say without ever saying what you believe by faith and what you expect to happen. It is no different, my brothers and sisters, friends, from when someone tells you you can't do a particular thing. Mm -hmm. And if you just take what they say without telling them what you believe you can do and will do, you most likely will not be able to do what they say you couldn't do. Because you believe and brought bought into your heart what they said you couldn't do which essentially is signing off on what they said you said to you, and therefore you were not able mm -hmm, to do it. For the sole purpose of developing and standing in unwavering faith, that's what this Tuesday night session is all about, developing our unwavering faith. When you share with someone what the doctor says, you need to be mindful 
and you need to practice saying this is what they say, but I'm not receiving that. For this is what I am saying and what I believe and what I expect to happen with me. Your reaction to what the doctor says needs to be the same reaction you would have towards the mailman. Here we go. If he showed up to your house or office with a package and he told you that this package contains poisonous rattle, uh, rattle, rattlesnakes, you would what? More, I, I believe you wouldn't. You would not sign that package, I don't think. Mm -mm. And you would most likely tell him to take it back with him. Well, my brother and sister, family, friends, when it comes to the doctor giving you a negative report, especially, I'm, I, I need to stress, especially, especially when they're not sure, you need to respond in the same way by telling him or her what you believe and expect to happen. My brother and sister, family, friends, don't repeat it, don't rehearse it, nor regurgitate on it. In other words, don't say constantly what they say. That's what they say. Just because they say it doesn't mean it's so. Don't settle on what they say. You believe God by faith and say what you believe and what you expect to happen. I bring this message because, again, I, I'm, I'm constantly hearing folks speak to me about certain things, especially, you know, especially if it got anything to do with faith, the gay guy do it, healing and, and trusting God. My antennas are, are, are up right away. And again, my antennas went up on Sunday. And ever since Sunday, I've been pondering, what am I going to say today, even though I had a message already prepared, but this morning, the Lord helped me to get it together. And he gave me this title because this is what folks are doing. They're repeating, they're rehearsing, and they're regurgitating on what the doctor says and, and, and buying it and taking it and saying, okay, that's what the doctor says. And then, okay, that's fine. They're the doctors. Have respect for the doctors. Thank you, doctors, for your report. But this is what I believe. Yes, that's what the doctor told me, mom. But I'm believing I'm healed. Yes, dad, that's what the doctors told me, but I believe I'm healed and I believe I will get through this. By doing that, my brothers and sisters, again, takes all the pressure, the attention off what the doctor says and now puts all the attention on what you believe as far as trusting God for your healing or whatever else you are believing God for. My brothers and sisters, friends, it is so important not to just settle and that's what it is, settling on what the doctor says as though it is. Mm -hmm. Even though, again, even though, again, what they say to you uh, uh, may be right on point. Even in that case, they say you have it and the x-ray show you have it. And it's OK. You still cannot take what they say as as, as final say, meaning now, OK, fine, doctor, thank you very much. I'm not going to go talk to my God and he's and we're going to talk about this and I'm believing he is going to see me through. But then especially when they give you that report and they're not sure, or oh, just irks me when they do that. Okay? This irks me when they do that. They should not be telling you what they think. I mean, they should not be telling you what they think they see by telling you this is what they know. When they don't really know at all. They're just guessing. My brother sister fine friends I'm going to close now. It is so important. Please, please, please. When the doctor tells you something, have the attitude and have this mindset. And when you go to tell others, because you do got, you got to tell some folks what you're going through, but say it in a way that you understand. Okay. But that's what the doctor says. Yeah. So you need to have a, but at the end. Yeah. But that's what the doctor says. This is what I'm believing. Mm -hmm. And see, by you doing that, gives the people who you're telling it to confidence uh -huh, and reassurance that you're going to be okay as far as you dealing with whatever the doctor told you. But when you take what the doctor says and talk like, well, that's what the doctor says, so it must be true. Well, now those who, who you are telling it to and are concerned about you are going to be concerned because you are buying in to what the doctor has told you. You need to back up what the doctor tells you with some faith and standard, even though it's probably easier said than done at that very moment. I get it. I understand. I know I've been through it myself. Trust me. 
And this is why I'm able to share this with you. You need to just have it continue to stand, haven't done all the stand in spite of what they tell you, even though it's, it's not easy to hear, we don't want to hear it, but we have really no other choice but to divert our attention from what the doctor said to what God's word says. And his word says, by his stripes, we are healed. And so, Father, uh, so my brothers and friends, I thank you for listening. Again, don't repeat it. Don't rehearse it. Nor regurgitate on it. Don't say what they say. Say what you believe and what you expect to happen. Let us pray. Our Father God, I thank you for this time. I thank you for this word. I thank you, Father, for giving me this word and, to, 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 and I wrestle with it and, I, and you help me put it together, Lord. And I pray that what, who all who are in the sound of my voice, especially those who are going through right now, who even have family members going through and they're standing in the gap for them, Lord, help them, Lord, to, to, to put all the emphasis on what they believe and what they expect by faith that you're going to get them through and not rely on or, or, or linger on, or again, as I said, repeat, rehearse or regurgitate constantly on what the doctor has told them for continue to say what the doctor has told them is not going to build up their faith it's going to destroy their faith and it's going to get them depressed and it's going to get them despair but when we take a stand and believe your word and take a stand for ourselves i know what you said doctor but this is what i believe and so have them to re to repeat and have them to rehearse and have them to regurgitate on what they believe instead of on what the doctor has told them. Lord, thank you again for this time. Thank you for this opportunity to share your word once again. And Lord, I ask you that you, as always, that you continue to touch and bless our pastor and his family, in particular, his sister right now. We're standing in the gap, though she may be having surgery on Wednesday, but Father, in the name of Jesus, we believe all is going to go well with that surgery, and that when that surgery is over, all will, say, will be said, said will be done, and Lord, that she will go on with her life, and we're believing for total healing in spite of whatever else she may have to deal with. We're claiming her healed from the top of her head to her soul or very feet, and anybody else on his line who is going through right now, I, I, I'm gonna bring up Deacon Davis. I know he's going through right now, and I, I pray for him and believe that by his stripes, he is healed in the name of Jesus. And anybody else, and there's so many, and I don't wanna forget nobody, so there's so many on this on this prayer line who is going through, and I know what's going through, and I'm asking you to touch each and every last one of them from the top of the head to the soul of their feet, that they continue to trust you for their healing in spite of what that doctor said, in spite of what the x-rays show, in spite of what their body is saying. In the name of Jesus, help them to stand, even though it's going to be easier said than done, even though they may be hurting, even though they may be going through for a while, that they will just continue to just somehow, some way, get the strength to just stand trusting you for their healing over what that doctor said. And so, Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give your name all the honor and glory and praise. And again, we thank you for this mission. All these petitions and desire we ask of you, we ask it in Jesus' name, believing and claiming it done by faith and give you thanks in advance for it. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Remember, saints, all things are possible to him, to her, to those of them that believe. Why? Because there's nothing too hard for Lord. Never stop praying. Never stop believing and never, I do mean never, never, never give up. Why? Because your healing and your miracle and your deliverance is on its way as long as you don't stop praying, stop believing and never, ever give up. And by all means, don't repeat it, don't rehearse it, and don't regurgitate on what the doctor has told you. Say what you believe and expect to happen. And I believe the Lord will see you through. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Talk to you next time. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Brother Dickinson. God bless everybody on the prayer line. Have bless a great you. night. Bye. See you in the morning, 8 a.m. Amen. 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 Amen.